Hello, everyone, and welcome. If you're just joining us at the Fun Place Summit, I'm Benita Fitzgerald Mosley, League Apps Head of Community and Impact and President of Fun Play. Thanks again to Assemblywoman Monica Wallace and to Tom Ferry for joining us in that great session earlier. And now we're gonna dive into impact evaluation with an incredible group of panelists from across the country. As a former Olympian in track and field and gold medal winner, I'm a lifelong athlete and now I'm a sports parent of two. So I really know firsthand uh, the power of sport and it has the power to change lives, to bring people together and to unite disparate communities. And uh, this impact evaluation session is really gonna show us how to uh, best leverage sport in order to impact communities and measure that along the way. As former CEO of Laureus USA and uh, Laureus is a foundation that funds, uh, provides grants to sport for development organizations across the world. Um, I know the power of data and data can make that impact of sports come alive and it can help all of us tell the story of the impact and the benefits of sport to all youth. League Apps has served as an operating system for many of our partners to collect valuable data, allowing organizations to capture the metrics they need and also to partner with other technology companies like Upmetrics and Hello Insight to help make that data usable. The LA Dodgers Foundation is a strong representation of the use of our uh, all three platforms. And we're really thrilled to talk about this with a terrific group of people. And now I'd like to introduce our panel, Sally Munimitsu. Hello, uh, Insight co-founder and COO. She builds and manages Hello Insight's internal and external relationships. Uh, she is uh, specialized in program and grants management and capacity building for 25 years. And she has expertise in maximizing evaluation data for ongoing improvements. Uh, current partners, including uh, YUSA, Annie E. Casey Foundation, of course, Laureus, Sport for Good Foundation, and many more. Uh, she has really been helping uh, organizations tell that story of data for many years. And prior to Hello Insight, Sally was an associate director at TCC Group and an ESL trainer. And uh, she's a Wharton, a Lauder MBA, uh, Massachusetts grad from the University of Pennsylvania, um, I personally have worked with Sally in my previous role as CEO of Laureus USA on a report that we'll hear more about a little bit later. So welcome, Sally. Thank you for having us. Uh, next, we have Greg Woodburn. Um, he's a client manager for strategic accounts at Upmetrics. Uh, Upmetrics empowers impact organizations with data to make informed decisions, build capacity, and tell their stories. He previously worked at the Clinton Global Initiative. Uh, also at Right to Play, USC Athletics, and other organizations that are dedicated to social impact through education, sports, and community development. Greg earned his MBA and his BA from USC. Uh, he walked on to the USC track and field team as a distance runner and eventually became the distance team captain. Greg continues to train and he's competed in the Boston Marathon and the New York City Marathon. Welcome, Greg. Thank you so much, Benita. And next we have Nicole Whiteman. She's the chief, chief executive officer of the Los Angeles Dodgers Foundation, where she leads the team's official charity. Los Angeles Dodgers Foundation is an award-winning uh, leader in sports-based youth development. And in addition, she's a board member for the Women's Leadership Council. Um, and under her leadership, the Dodgers Foundation launched Dodgers RBI, which is reviving baseball in inner cities in a youth development program serving over 10,000 youth uh, today. The New York uh, native has been recognized throughout the industry for exceptional contributions, having earned the 2018 Sports Business Journal Game Changers Award, Anti-Defamation League's 2018 Deborah Award, Ebony Magazine's 2017 Woman Up Award, and the Pink T. Rose Foundation's 2017 Progressive Leadership Award, just to name a few. We're thrilled to have you here with us, Nicole. Welcome. And last but not least, we have James Lopez. 
James's passion for sport and social work has brought him to the LA Dodgers Foundation where he served as manager of, strategic, of strategy and impact. And at the foundation, he works to develop a robust program measurement and evaluation strategy for all the programs and fundraising efforts, as well as contributing to research and fund development for the organization. Uh, by using social, a social work lens and his skill set, he brings a unique perspective to the foundation and he's really passionate about propelling the organization forward to best serve the most vulnerable communities in Los Angeles. So to kick things off, we're going to hear from James, um, the manager of strategy and impact of LA Dodgers Foundation. James, take it away. Thank you for that introduction, Benita. Hello, my name is James Lopez. I'm the manager of strategy and impact for the Dodgers Foundation. I'm happy to be here at the League Ass Fun Play Summit uh, to talk about impact evaluation for sports-based youth development. I'm happy to be a part of the panel with uh, my colleagues. And before we jump into the panel, um, I'd like to take the opportunity to give a little bit of context about uh, the case study we're doing uh, with the Dodgers Foundation, specifically our sports-based youth development program, Dodgers RBI. So quick intro to who the Dodgers Foundation are. We're the official 501c3 of the Los Angeles Dodgers. Um, we, we are a separate entity, separate nonprofit, and we're really focused on tackling the biggest problems facing all Angelinos today, whether that's in the space of education, healthcare, homelessness, youth development, and social justice. Um, really, what we're talking about today is our key youth development program, Dodgers RBI. Um, Dodgers RBI is, is a youth baseball and softball program that uses sport to teach social emotional learning and also increase access to resources in communities that um, typically and historically have been underserved. So healthcare resources, education resources, um, fitness, mental health. Um, we're using the sport to really deliver those resources to the community. And so, the challenge in my role with the foundation is to really work with our team and figure out how do we measure it? What are we, what are we really doing out there in the community? Um, so there's a couple of, of guiding uh, elements or questions that we have to ask ourselves when, when we do measurement and evaluation. And there's this, um, this common phrase we hear, what gets measured gets done. Or I like to say, uh, what matters most gets measured and then what measures most gets done, and then you're getting done what matters most. Um, so really we're looking at like two types of data that we're measuring within our program. Uh, one are the outputs and the outcomes. So outputs are really, you know, who are we serving? What's the demographic data of the population we're serving? Race, gender, age, um, how many people do we have? Some of those quick hits, those quick numbers that you often see in impact reports and annual reports. Um, so, you know, 10,000 kids, 50% are female, 30% are black, 60% uh, are Latino, whatever it might be. So we actually use league apps to collect that data through our program registration. So we're able to like customize our registration to make sure we're getting all the data we need so that we really know who we're serving and based on our historical research and our needs assessments, are we serving the right populations, the, the communities that we know need these resources? And then the second question that kind of guides our measurement strategy is kind of, uh, might sound like a rude question. Um, like you wouldn't, when I was a kid, I'd probably get in trouble with my mom for talking like this, but it's so what? Like, so what, what's the big deal if there's 10,000 kids playing baseball and softball? Uh, and so over the last few years, I've worked really, really closely with our team at the Dodgers Foundation and with a couple of um, partners that you'll meet shortly at the panel to really answer this question. Um, what's the big deal? Well, after a lot of research, you know, we, we all believed internally in the power of sport to teach life lessons, to build leadership skills, to develop young people into healthy and thriving adults. Um, I personally can attest to that. I'm sure uh, many of the former athletes and, and current sports programmers would definitely say that's why we do what we do. Um, but we just couldn't figure out how to capture that. So after a lot of research, 
we realized, oh, those leadership skills, those, those goal setting skills, that's called social emotional learning. Great. There's a whole uh, field of study on this. Who's the expert? Who can we bring in to, to help us measure this impact? Um, so through lots of connections and research, we ended up connecting with um, Hello Insight, who we'll meet shortly. And they have a tool for measuring, measuring these impacts, a pre and post survey um, tool. So we're implementing that tool um, for ages nine and up in our program. And uh, to see if they're making gains, what we're calling gains or, or progress in the learning areas. So that's the big so what, that's the big thing we're after in the sports space you don't program. Are, are the youth we're serving improving their skills, improving skills that will help them down the road? And then in addition, we're also collecting uh, one-time post-test evaluations um, for a lot of our programming within the Dajare program itself. So like I said earlier, we like to deliver a lot of programming and resources to the community um, alongside the traditional sports experience of uh, practices, games, et cetera. So um, for example, we one of our most popular programs is called a, a fitness clinic where we get you together with some trained coaches to learn about general fitness, exercise, get the kids moving. And um, we'll, do, we'll evaluate the youth via a survey after that and get their, um, get a sense of how they feel, how they engage with the material, and in addition, just you know, did they like it or not? So that was, those are the two big so what that we're capturing. Um, you know, this all just didn't happen in one season for us. Um, I've been with the Dodgers Foundation coming up on six years, uh, one year as an intern and, and coming up on five years full time. And, you know, the Dodgers Foundation really had to really input some resources and commitment to this measurement and evaluation work. Um, I'm one time staff, one full time staff dedicated to measurement and evaluation for all of our efforts. Um, in addition, each year we typically have interns who support the work. And it's been up to me and, um, and our team to really create a data collection culture of uh, and create a buy-in to understanding why that's so important. Why do we need to to spend time and resources on data collection and analysis? Um, we couldn't do it all by ourselves. I'm only one person. Um, so with the help of League Apps, Hello Insight, whom I've already mentioned, and um, that third partner of Metrics, uh, we're able to all kind of work together so that we can get the robust data and outcomes and get the stories that we want to tell that are out happening in the field. Um, quick note on Upmetrics, you'll meet them, but we're able to, Upmetrics is a tool that we use uh, to take data from League Apps and Hill Insight, display that and, and make it digestible for a lot of our different stakeholders and ourselves internally. So we collect data and analyze data to make decisions and share the results. Uh, when, I, when we first um, started building this slide, it said share results and make decisions, but I intentionally switched those around um, to drive home the point that we're working very hard to use the data, not just as a report out at the end of the year in an annual report or an impact report, but really as a decision maker in the middle of the process. Um, for example, if we uh, are low on attendance, we have to make a decision. Uh, let's say it's a six part series of a program. After session one and session two, if we're not hitting our targets, how can we pivot? How can we adjust? Instead of waiting to the end and realizing, okay, we didn't meet our goal. Let's wonder why. Um, if we can make decisions uh, in the moment or in the program, it's a lot more beneficial for us. And then the results will be better anyway. There's three um, spaces, I guess you could say that, where we share our data. The first is internally. Here's a snapshot of the metrics dashboard of our Dodgers RBI registrations. Data is that is coming from League Apps, getting cleaned up and uh, automated into an uh, metrics dashboard. This is something that I present in our team meetings and say, okay, you know, according to our goals and our target participation, here's where we're at. Um, again, setting that culture and using the data internally amongst our team to make decisions. The second is externally. 
Here's a snapshot from one of our annual reports, uh, one of the Dodgers RBI pages. So you can see some of the data there on the right hand side uh, with participant demographics. Um, so, you know, in we all know in the nonprofit space, uh, you have got to share your reports out to the community. And then finally, um, accountability, especially um, coming off the heels of the COVID-19 pandemic, where we pivoted to serve meals and do things that we've never done before, like drive through resource distribution. And so creating accountability for ourselves and for donors and for um, our team owner, chairman of our board, for our board members, um, you know, what are you guys doing during the pandemic? You guys can't play baseball and softball. Well, here's what we're doing. We're, we're, we're shifting and being able to, to have a nice process in place to collect the data, analyze the data and report um, makes, makes it very easy for us to have a transparent and accountable uh, culture of reporting for our organization. So that's a quick snapshot of our Dodge RBI program and how we're using data, how we're using um, different platforms to all work together to create um, some systems internally for decision making and also for accountability and reporting. Um, so with that, with that, I'll wrap and we'll get into the conversation with uh, the rest of the team here. Great job, James. Thanks so much for your terrific insights. And I know I'm probably preaching to the choir when I say how important data is, um, as James has so clearly outlined for all of us, but um, for all of you out there in the audience and uh, the ones, you're the ones designing and implementing programs, you're dealing with questions from funders and you're having to prove the efficacy of your programs to partners. And so it can't be said enough, data is important. It can bring your stories to life. It can help you make really powerful, important decisions for your organizations. And so as you sports organizations and, and knowing that many of you are former athletes, just like myself and probably still pretty competitive, um, most organizations are most likely collecting data on athletic achievement and progress. Um, but what we just heard from James, uh, as far as what the Dodgers are doing, is that we also need to collect to measure the impact of your programs. And uh, we're going to spend some time right now exploring that a little bit more. So we'll start with Sally and Greg to kick us off. So first from you, Greg, I, I really want to hear what data uh, your partners are collecting and using and why do SBYDs uh, need to use your platform? Absolutely. Yeah, we're fortunate at Metrics to work with a range of different nonprofits and foundations, including quite a few Fun Play members. And I think what we've seen with a lot of our SBYD partners is really probably four um, building blocks of the type of data that they want to leverage and, and share about. So like James was mentioning, really starting with who are we serving? So looking at a lot of that demographic information and that community information to really understand who we're working with. Um, also understanding how we're working with folks. That can be information around, you know, dosage, attendance, being able to understand the actual programs that you're running and what does that engagement look like? Also seeing a lot of folks want to look at program quality. So that can be things like satisfaction surveys that could be looking at, you know, the, the staff, the team that you have, are they reflective of the community that you're working with? I mean, what is their experience like? And then lastly, getting towards that, that so what that James was referring to. So that longer term impact, again, that could be around fitness, that could be around social emotional learning, that could be around, you know, behavior change. There's a lot of different ways to, you know, measure that impact. It's going to depend on what does impact mean for your organization. Thanks, uh, Greg. So Sally, I'm going to turn to you for a second. If you could really speak in depth about SEL outcomes, social emotional learning outcomes, that Hello Insight tracks and how um, you allow SBYDs to, to track that information and that data. Great, thanks Benita and Greg. Um, so at Hello Insight, we have this unique way of measuring both, we call it the YD of SBYD. So in the youth development perspective, we know you guys do great sports, you have your health measures, but we also know that you do youth development. But how do you measure a youth's development? And so in the space, especially the last 15 years, social emotional learning has gotten a lot of traction, especially in this past year of COVID. 
SEL has become even more important and, we, and, the, and then the greater benefit of being in an SBYD type of program. So I too am a mother of two and just knowing that my young kids are in programs that are not just healthy and getting them outdoors, but also that the coaches are trained in positive coaching best practices or positive youth development best practices. And that we know that SBYD best practices do to help develop social emotional learning. So it's not that SBYD programs have to now embrace a whole SEL curriculum. We know that good coaching leads to social emotional learning. And so by having those measures like the LADF does, we're able to really see that. So, and with Benita's leadership at the Laurier Sports a Good Foundation last year, we were able to then invest and go really deep into our data set across the country, where we were able to compare young people who participated in sports with young people who didn't participate in sports. Mm -hmm. And what level of positive youth development experiences did they have, but also what level of social emotional learning outcomes do they have? And for those of you in SBYD, good to hear and know that it, it sport, young people who participate in high quality SBYD programs, it really does matter. And I know every one of you out there really feel that every day, but now you can have the data that backs it up. So we know that young people who participate in sports feel and get more um, positive youth development experiences and it's highly correlated with more um, SEL development. Um, in particular, we know that, and we were able to then break down that data. And so all the power to data for the field is also to see what matters for what kinds of young people. So we know in particular that for young women, sharing power, which is a positive youth development best practice of knowing that the coach isn't the leader, that it is the young people's leadership that's really important and the more that young women can feel empowered to lead within their sport and with their team, it really does has a high, high correlation with their SEL development. And for young men, it's all about expanding their interests. So a good coach who listens and understands a young person and all of their various interests and help them explore that, help them introduce that to other team members who have similar interests, that is highly correlated to their SEL development. But so you can have that data that helps the field, but clearly also have the impact data of what percent of your young people have developed an SEL, but also to the point of your frontline staff, what did we do right? What could we do better? And so all of that data can really help develop the program. Thank you, uh, Sally. It's really nice to, to see that we have data that can go both ways, really um, helping the field as well as uh, collecting data that helps each individual program in a more uh, catered, uh, customized way. So um, to Nicole and to James, I, I want to go a little deeper and find out, you know, first question is, how in the world did you go about determining what data, what information you wanted to collect and needed to collect and, um, you know, kind of backing it up a little bit, what questions were you trying to answer uh, that you knew were important to your various stakeholders? Yeah, thanks, Benita. Um, and honestly, uh, James did such a good, great job demonstrating this, but we basically collect data with solutions in mind. So we create impact frameworks that actually consist of our goals and our objectives per program. And our questions that we're asking each other is the so what that James referenced, right? How are we measuring what we say we're doing? What will help us to assess and deploy our resources? What can we measure to determine impact and how can we use those metrics to tell a, a story of a programmatic evolution, a story to a fundraiser, um, so many various stakeholders involved? I think one of the most important questions we have to ask ourselves often is how does LADF make an immediate impact, but also how does LADF make a long-term impact? And data has helped us with that over time story. So we know that we have direct impact services and we can count drive-through food distributions and health screenings but we also want to have long range impact. And so data has allowed us to determine, you know, things over time like growth in girls and growth in uh, black youth and changes in co coaches attitudes and changes in youth ha habits. And those things are important to our stakeholders. Well, do you have any advice uh, for organizations who aren't quite sure what questions to ask for themselves or what data co to collect, like where, where should they start? 
Yeah, I think it's really important to think of the impact that you want to have and the ways that you can quantify it. So what is the story that you are trying to tell? Too often, I think a lot of our organizations look to the next organization and say, they're measuring this. So let's measure this. Um, really glad that our team actually looks inward. We look at ourselves and we try not to actually mimic what others are doing because it may not be the story that we're trying to tell. So ask yourselves, what can you count or measure that will tell a story about how you are changing lives, how your organization is changing lives? So when you think about what you're doing, what will you do with the data? Who will you share it with and how will you market it? So how you will use the data is really important. Why collect it and figure out what you wanna collect if you're just gonna keep it um, all to yourselves, right? It should inform the work, but it should also be outward information that can frankly at some point maybe be a best practice for someone else. I think one of the very important questions and advice is will it assist you in fundraising? We have to be realistic. Several of our organizations exist because we have donors who are contributing and investing in our work. So how will it really assist you in fundraising? What is it that your donors want to know? Frankly, what do your funders really care about? Um, some of it you will use to inform the, the program and some of it you will realize, ah, I will not share that maybe for ignorance in terms of them not understanding it or it's just not important to that group. And ultimately, I think the, the hardcore question and my biggest piece of advice is, does it contribute to your story? Um, no point of doing it if it has nothing to do with anything that you're trying to get across or anybody that you're trying to impact. Right. And I think it's really important to also recognize that like, if you're starting from ground zero, um, it's going to take time. It's going to take quite a bit of time, actually. So we've been doing this for five, six years, um, and we still don't have it nailed down 100% perfectly, right? Our first, the first survey I ever saw had a question on it that said, uh, who's your who's your favorite Dodger? And, you know, it was just there. And it was like, why are we collecting this? So, like, you know, be, be nice to yourself. Ask, 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 ask experts in the space. And like Nicole said, once you figured out what it is, what, what change you're trying to make, whether it's in a group or on an individual basis, start there and there's, you know, start digging into the research and seeing what you want to do. But it's, it's important to recognize that it will take time. There will be some trial and error and um, that's okay. You know, there's a, there's a community of organizations and, and um, supporters and hopefully, you know, the, the folks that you're accountable to, like your board and your funders, um, you know, have an empathetic approach to this and know that you'll get there. Great, thank you. Um, I think that's some great advice for, for folks just kind of starting from scratch. So, um, you know, thinking about though, over the past five to eight years, I mean, I, I came to Laureus in 2016 and although I'd heard about collective impact, I'd heard about sports-based youth development, um, I, I hadn't really gotten all that involved in those programs until I became CEO of Laureus. And I realized at the time that although organizations were beginning to do some measurement and evaluation, not enough were doing it. And we didn't have uh, a lot of that impact data uh, to, to, to be able to use and, and talk about. Um, and now, um, years, years later, we are doing a better job, I think, of collecting it, but not necessarily leveraging it. And I would even go further to say, not leveraging it as a sector, right? Um, we may be able to leverage it, as in, leverage it as individual organizations, but how do we tell the story of the value of sports-based youth development, of SEL skill development through sports, of uh, the impact you can have on communities and, and grow and scale that impact if you use data. So um, both back to Nicole and James, I, I wanna know if you've seen a change in this time period, the last five years or so since you've been doing it at the LA Dodgers and we're probably uh, somewhat trailblazers in this regard. And then to Sally and Greg, um, really more about you know, what the, the secret sauce is of, of how to leverage that data someplace like the Dodgers and other places internally, program development, training of staff, et cetera. So we'll start with Nicole and James. I think I'll just say that the change that I've seen is definitely that instead of just collecting it, we are leveraging it and we're using it to adjust our efforts in real time. Um, and I think we've all actually found that in the last year as we're on the heels of this pandemic, that's been even more important than ever. And I think that's why um, we've become less frustrated with it because we've actually realized pretty quickly 
that if we use it in the moment that we're collecting it, and if we see this in real time and we use it, it can really inform positive pivots in programming. It can help us to adjust accordingly when things like a pandemic hit. Um, the data shows us areas where participants are excelling and it shows us areas of struggle. And we're not afraid, I think, the last maybe three or four years to say, that's not going very well. How do we pivot? How do we adjust? Or how do we collect it in a different way? Or how do we adjust something in our program or a goal or something that is just not tied very well to? I think that when we can reallocate our resources and additional support sort of based on the data, um, it's a success. Uh, it really does give us a sense of, you know, uh, uh, leveraging the data for, for good. We're not going to be perfect at it, to James' point, right? We're not perfect at it. But the fact that we can look at it and we can pull up these various systems that we're currently using at any given time and tell the board members or anyone what's happening within the program, and frankly, even the, the, our actual constituents, right? So to, to be able to share with youth and families, you said this, so we're doing this. Um, reacting has been uh, amazing, obviously, but being proactive um, has really served us well. Yeah, and I'll add on the community side of that. I think, you know, with, with the positive SEL outcomes and with different partners, we've done a lot of communications and marketing around uh, sport for development, sport for youth development, and, and uh, kind of working against some of the uh, unhealthy sport environments um, that we hear and read about or, you know, experience firsthand sometimes. Um, and I've seen a, a change in some of the youth and families we serve and, and their change in approach to why they're in sports. Um, you know, understanding that we're not, our program is not out there to develop the next Major League Baseball player, um, but it is there to develop the youth and the community uh, in a more holistic approach. And um, seeing that buy-in from the community, especially when it's associated with a highly competitive Dodger brand, like we just won the World Series. So it's like, what if, you know, what do you mean you're not you're trying to develop the next great ball player? And it's like, no, we're not. We're trying to develop the next generation of young young people uh, to contribute and to be, you know, healthy, thriving individuals. So seeing that change, and we've used the stories and the data um, one thing we haven't really mentioned is, is qualitative data, stories, testimonials to kind of sway the, uh, the, under, the opinion or kind of the understanding of what we're trying to do. And really kind of support the, the data itself with real life anecdotes and right. uh, uh, like you said, testimonials. Um, Sally and Greg, I'm gonna actually switch the question just a little bit and, and want you to talk. You know, we've got, um, you know, League Apps and Hello Insight and Upmetrics all uh, producing data for the LA Dodgers. Um, they have access to and are able to, to, to use that, that data that they're collecting and, you know, league apps being that operating system or entry point. Um, and then your tools provide the appropriate data analysis and visualization. So can you talk a little bit about how you use the league apps data, how you uh, both uh, Sally and Greg work together and your companies work together to help uh, facilitate the, the storytelling. If you don't mind, Gray, I'll just jump in here. Um, so yeah, it's been a pleasure to learn more about the League Apps um, operating system and we've been, especially with the partnership with James and team is that you know, we're all about collecting the data. Um, our team has been in the field of, of program evaluation for the last 30 years. So we've seen all the pain points. And so in developing something like Hello Insight, we've done almost everything but collect the data, right? So we have a valid and reliable tool that was again, supported by Lori Sports for Good in its early inception. Um, it, it has real-time analytics. It's got a beautiful interface, but it's still about collecting the data. And so what we're able to do there, um, and we'll give it a really good go this year, James, right? Um, we'll be integrating with League Apps to be able to push out our links to all of the different teams across LA and all the different age groups, um, and then being able to see that League Apps data and, and see the registration information against the young people's submission. So that way we can do a second targeted run, uh, making sure we're trying to collect as much data as possible. So by integrating with League Apps, we'll be able to help LADF get a stronger response rate 
both at the beginning. So this is about leveraging data, not only at the end into Nicole and reporting, but really about, well, what do I do? And especially with good coaching, you wanna know how do I help my teams? What are some great coaching practices that I should emphasize? And that's one of the aspects of the real-time data the Hello Insight can provide. So I mentioned earlier that most girls need sharing power, but is that true of this softball team, right? So that's the kind of information that James and, and his team will be able to see in real time based on the profiles of the young people who took the survey. And then at the end of the season, we'll be able to then push out the, sur the surveys again vis-a-vis -vis league apps to be able to collect that post data. And so we're hoping that the coaches will be even that much more vested in collecting the data because they too saw the benefit of using that information and collecting that information. So in terms of really leveraging it, it's really about that frontline information that they gain and what they can do about it, but also how that information can at the more programmatic level for James be able to say, hey, what's going on in this location? What more can I bolster them? Or what learnings can I bring from this team over to this RBI location? Because he gets to see the data across. Um, so those are great ways we, I think we're talking about leveraging the information. And then um, I'll pass it over to Greg about how the SCL data can also run through at Metrics. Absolutely. Yeah, I really see at Metrics as a powerful complement to League Apps and to Hello Insight. And really at the core of the Metrics platform is being able to bring together all of your quantitative and qualitative data in one place to help you make those more informed decisions and more powerfully tell your story. So you know you have registration information coming in from folks that are signing up through League Apps and you have some of that SCL data, being able to bring that into a metrics can help connect that with other types of data. You know, we have an in-platform survey tool if you want to do some satisfaction surveys or some other types of information you're collecting, bringing in that qualitative data like James was just mentioning. And again, what does that look like to create that space for, for sharing power? What does that look like to promote different interests for your young people? That could be so doing some simple short videos from your smartphone after practice, interviewing some of your, your athletes, asking them some questions about their interests um, and bring it into a metrics, you can then start to filter that data in different ways. You could you know, take all of your information, filter it down to make comparisons between different sites or between your different staff members to help them see the information specific to their location. Um, the Dodgers are also bringing in public data. So, hey, how can we complement the information that we're collecting with information by zip code and other public data to kind of get more context on our program and on our community. Um, and then also really being able to share that information out. So, you know, how do we look at this ourselves? How do we tell that story publicly and not just about here's what we did in the past, but again, connecting that work today to those future goals, telling that story of here's where we're going next and how you can be a part of where we're going next. So I think a big part of, you know, where this, the field is going is not just that looking backwards with a once a year report, but kind of how are we yeah, making things more real time? How are we continuing to look towards how does this data feed into the actions that we're taking today and tomorrow? That's great. Um, you know, it's, it's just so important uh, to, to be able to collaborate, I think, across these various platforms and for particularly with Upmetrics to, to have a tool to be able to bring all this data into one place and be able to analyze it and visualize it. And, and really use it and leverage it is, is really important. So, um, you know, thanks to both Sal and Greg for uh, the great tools and, um, you know, happy that we at League Apps are, have the privilege of working with you both. Um, you know, the Dodgers have, have made data collection a part of your culture. It's what you do, it's how you do it, it's important. You've clearly gotten bought in from leaders, from funders, from other strategic partners, but, uh, I, I wonder, you know, I remember it at Laureus, it was, we were fortunate to be able to get investment from a, from a sponsor to, uh, to, to support the very expensive, you know, uh, research that we wanted to do around social emotional learning. And it was, you know, over time, over the better part of a year. And then of course we had the time to develop the report and everything else. So, it takes a, a clear investment in resources, financial resources, time uh, investment of your team, finding those right partners to be able to do that. How do you sell that in to the leadership? If you're an executive director, how do you make the case 
to your board that this is an investment worth making. If you are uh, a team member wanting to you know, get buy-in from your executive director, or if you're trying to get the funding from uh, a funder to, to try to pay for it, you know, how do you make the case? So I'd love to hear from any of you, Sally, Greg, uh, James, Nicole, we're, we're gonna use this as our last question. I feel like we're in a unique situation, so I'll start off a little bit. Um, I think, Benita, you hit it on the head, right? It's not cheap, it's not free, it takes time, it takes people, and I fully recognize as well that organizations must be strategic about how we allocate our resources, especially during these times, and frankly, also our staff's time. But our specific situation when I arrived in 2000, 2013 was that we needed to clarify our message for our audience. And we needed to erase some of the errors that were made by the previous iteration of our organization. And so we actually use data as the catalyst to clarify our message. And so our case was made because we directly definitively said, in order to clarify our message for Dodger fans, our donors, the broader sports-based youth development world, we have to invest in these tools and these people, frankly, who can actually focus on it. And even when we started, um, James will tell you, we started with one program and quickly after a few years, we came to realize that it was impor important across the board as we grew and we developed strategic plans and more. It, it, it's almost impossible to answer some of the questions, frankly, on a grant application or in a, um, on a phone interview without having this, this data and having had some investment of time, even if it's small or more, right? And frankly, as a CEO, it's incredibly important for me to confidentially, confidently tell our story um, when I have platforms like this or others, because it's a powerful combination of these success stories and this data and painting this qualitative and this quantitative picture that I think serves us really well and has been a huge part of our success. Um, data makes us stronger. And so I know it's an argument that many have to have with the folks inside of their various organizations about whether you invest in it. But I think if you can tie it specifically to why you need the data and frankly, how is it going to make you better? How is it going to validate the work and the role that we play in communities um, trying to evolve and change youth lives? I think you have to start there. But no, undoubtedly, the case has to be made and the case is always not that easy. Well, it's been a pleasure talking to all of you, hearing your insights, uh, real life experience and advice in this area. I personally believe uh, that this is the key to taking uh, particularly the SBYD community, the impact we wanna have on uh, youth all over the country uh, and be able to avail these benefits of these programs to more and more kids and get more and more investment and resources devoted to very deserving programs, such as the ones gathered here at the Fun Place Summit. So thanks again to our panel for joining us today and for making an impact on communities across the country. We're really proud to call each of you our partners here at League Apps and um, thank you so much. So uh, thanks to all of you for, for listening into the panel and we want you to enjoy the rest of the Fun Place Summit. Thank you. Hi, Marty Reed here, National Partnerships and Marketing Manager for Positive Coaching Alliance, the leading nonprofit dedicated to providing a positive character building experience for youth athletes. And we're proud partners of League Apps and excited to be a part of this year's Fun Play Summit. In partnership with Chicago-based foundation Susan Crown Exchange, or SCE, we launched the Million Coaches Challenge. So over the next four years, we'll be providing training to over 400,000 youth coaches, over half of which will be in underprivileged communities, to foster the social and emotional needs of youth athletes. This marks SCE's largest investment yet in youth sports, and we believe it's a worthy investment. You know, we're all aware that combining physical activity, play, and collaboration, sports have near limitless uh, opportunity and potential to help young athletes develop social and emotional skills like teamwork, empathy, and problem solving, which is gonna help them far beyond the playing field. 
you know, I grew up playing softball and I won a championship at UCLA, but there were moments in my youth sports experience where I was ready to quit due to a coach that didn't care about my mental or emotional needs beyond my athletic ability. I thought I had it tough, and since last March, youth across the country have endured so many challenges from virtual learning, you know, the racial injustice, the health and economic impacts of COVID-19, the list goes on, and the magnitude of the impact that this has had on kids is yet to be fully measured, but as young people return to play, coaches will need the tools to meet kids' social and emotional needs as they process this unfamiliar time. And for more than two decades, PCA's mission has been to create a positive character building youth sports environment that results in not only better athletes, but more importantly, better people. And we are equipped and excited to train your coaches in social and emotional learning. As a fun play partner, you have access to our 60 minute self-paced online coach training for free. Your coaches can receive certification in what we call double goal coach, a coach who helps athletes strive to win, but more importantly, teaches life lessons and develops a character of the athletes that they're coaching. This training will help your coaches find more ways to connect to the hearts and the minds of athletes from diverse backgrounds through fostering the growth mindset, filling the emotional tank, and modeling the type of character that it takes to support our young people as they return to schools and to the youth sports playgrounds. Learn more at positivecoach.org MCC. Thank you so much, and we really hope you take advantage of this unique opportunity.